Python's enum didn't exist when I wrote the first version of this rock, paper, scissors game. Now it does, so I'm using it. I've created a class that subclasses enum, and I have my attributes with the names and values of the different types of items. I have a string method that just returns the name of the item in lowercase, and then I have a method beats that tells you whether the particular item beats the item that is passed as an argument. Um, let's play. It reports that um, my input was invalid. I'll choose rock. We both chose rock. I won against the computer's scissors. Let's write paper. Uh, so that's the general idea. When you've had enough, you just press enter and it stops. Um, why don't we step through the code in the debugger? I think we'll start here. Okay, so this, I'm just going to fix this. One second. I've um, renamed some things a few times, so this should really be um, item. Yeah, so item is the enum, and if you say for item in item, then you can get the name from the item, and that gives us item names. So let's try this again in the debugger. Okay, so using the list comprehension, we got the item names. And now we want to have the item names formatted so it can appear in messages. So now we have this, formatted items. It's a single string now. And they're lowercase, separated by comma space. A loop now. Okay, so the program is going to choose its own item. So we're going to choose from the items. Uh, for some reason, choice, random choice, doesn't work directly with my subclass of enum. I don't know why, but if I turn it into a list, then it does work. So you see, my item is scissors. And what's the type of this? Does this show? Yeah, it's an item with the name of scissors, value of two. Now we're gonna, we're gonna prompt for the player's item. That's down here. I'll type rock. And this is a string with rock. We make sure that we entered something. And now we want to make sure that this is in item names. Remember, item names is these, rock, paper, scissors. Um, so we're going to convert this to uppercase and then see if it's not in item names. It is in, so we continue. Now we use the string, the player's item name to find the item. Okay, so this is the player item. This is of type item. You win against my scissors. Back again. Computer pick scissors. Um, I'll pick scissors too. Okay, does it beat? Does it beat? No, so we must have both chosen the same thing. We both chose scissors. All right, maybe one more time through. Uh, still scissors, randomly chosen by the computer program. So let's see, I'll let scissors beat me. Scissors beats paper. Okay, so we're asking if Paper beats scissors. That's not true. Now we want to know if scissors beats paper. Oh, let's uh, step into beats. Here we go. So this is interesting in how it decrements the value and then does a modulo operator with the modulus of three. Um, I've just been playing 
with this here. Um, so if you take a zero and subtract one, giving you a minus one, and then you do modulo three on that, that gives you a two. So it's kind of a way to, to wrap around. So if we'd said uh, two minus one, that would give you one, modulo three is still a one. So the reason for the modulo operator is when we get below zero. If we said zero modulo three, that's just zero. But minus one wraps around to two. So it's that wrap, wrapping around that we're doing here. We want to know if scissors, this item, beats paper. And so we've determined that because uh, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock, rock wrapping around beats scissors, we can just use this decrementing in modulo to find the number, which is one, for what scissors beats. And so now we want to know whether the item at one, which is paper, is what was passed as an argument here, and it is. So this is going to be true. Scissors does beat paper. Okay, if you want to see the full diff of all the changes, um, I can show it to you briefly here. Um, in a unified viewer or the side-by-side -side viewer. Or you can uh, follow the link in the notes to GitHub. See you next time.